Hello and welcome to another episode of Greenless Lockdown. I'm Zebedee Parks and on this episode we're going to be talking about cruise ships and coronavirus. And there is a lot to talk about here. Especially when we start talking about the role of border force, how society responds to crises under capitalism and so many other issues. Historically it's also interesting to look at how countries actually dealt with ships that came in carrying plagues. In fact, in a lot of cases, they made more sensible and humane decisions than what is happening right now in Australia under border force. I mean, 300 years ago in Maricel in France in 1720, ships would arrive into the city's ports when there was a plague happening across Europe. Ships would then be checked to see if they'd been encountered with any cities that had had the plague or had been rumored to have the plague. They would then be quarantined, the passengers, the crew, the goods would all be quarantined in special quarantine areas and islands off the main city. Then after 18 days or so, if everyone appeared to be healthy and didn't have any cases of the plague, the people would then be allowed to enter into the city and go about their business. To me, this approach makes a lot more sense than what we're seeing under border force, which is literally either we allow the Ruby Princess cruise ship to dock in Australia, and everyone to disembark in the busiest CBD in the country and just wander around with no proper medical testing even though there were already reports of cases on board before the cruise ship had docked. Or Border Force just wants to say you can't come anywhere near Australia, we won't give you any assistance at all Well, when there are reported cases on board ships. I mean that's literally the two positions Border Force has taken on cruise ships. Anyway, before I go into what I think Australia could and should be doing in relation to cruise ships and coronavirus, I want to have a little chat about Border Force. A lot of people have found Border Force's reactions confusing, unpredictable, random, not in the best interests of society. My analysis is that Border Force is acting this way because it was literally not set up to act in the best interests of society. Border Force was set up to detain refugees. Border Force was set up to turn back boats of desperate people fleeing asylum back to danger. Border Force was set up to spread fear amongst the community with deportations. Border Force right now is detaining refugees in hotels where they are at serious risk of contracting coronavirus because they cannot practice physical distancing and many of them have medical conditions that put them out in high risk categories. That is the role Border Force is playing. And when people in Villawood Detention Centre protest the conditions that they've been forced to endure which do not allow them to physically distance and exercise all the things that the Australian government is saying people should be exercising, what does Border Force do? They send in the right police. That is the role that Border Force has set up. It was set up by politicians in Australia who have built their entire political careers on abusing refugees and scapegoating and spreading racism. And Border Force was set up as an agency to do that. COVID-19 has reinforced my view that Border Force needs to be abolished as it does not act in the best interests of society or the broader health of society. What Australia should be doing is it should be taking a leaf out of Cuba's book. When a cruise ship was sailing around the Caribbean during coronavirus, there were reported cases on board. The crew and the passengers wanted to disembark and go back home. No country in the Caribbean, including the United States, would allow them to disembark except for Cuba. Cuba and the strict World Health Organization guidelines allowed the crew to disembark and transported people to the airport and allowed them to fly back to the countries they come from. This is a response Australia could be taking with the cruise ships, with the passengers and the crew. Australia could also be doing what they do to people who are arriving by planes, which is quarantining people in hotels for 14 days and providing medical checks. Right now, the Ruby Princess is docked off Port Kembla Port with hundreds and hundreds of cruise members still on board. There's already been cases of people who have the coronavirus. Many people apparently can't even get tested on the coronavirus and they have been detained by the Australian police force on the ship and not been allowed to leave. And this is a ship that hasn't undergone a deep clean, even though it's had cases of coronavirus on board. This is a ship where people have been forced to eat out of the main kitchen on board the ship, which again is probably very susceptible to the coronavirus. People on the Ruby Prince crew on the Ruby Princess cruise ship need medical attention and need to be quarantined somewhere safe and humane. They do not need to be detained by the Australian police on board this cruise ship, where people probably get the virus and die as a result of the Australian government's actions. There are reportedly more than a dozen cruise ships off Australia's coast, which some people have referred to as death ships, in which people have basically been left on them to die. I mean, are cruise ships now the new sacrifice zone under capitalism? And let's be honest, the people on cruise ships, I mean, the, a lot of the crew are from global south countries, such as the Philippines and Indonesia, and are often working very exploitative conditions for very exploitative pay. 
and even many of the passengers on cruise ships, they're not the super wealthy, they're not the David Jettons of the world. And I say David Jeffen because he's a billionaire that posted a photo of himself on his luxury half a billion dollar yacht, talking about how he was self-isolating in a way that 99.99% of the world can't self-isolate. I mean, the people on cruise ships are not those, they're people who are often worked most of their life and have saved up money and decide to go on a holiday as many of us decide to go on holidays. What we're seeing with Australia's response to cruise ships is eerily similar to the response of what happened in the Titanic when it hit that iceberg. The poorer layers of society were locked below and not allowed to get out, while the richer layers of society were able to access a few remaining lifeboats on board. People on cruise ships are now joining climate refugees, for instance, who are being denied entry into Global North countries after their own islands have become uninhabitable due to the actions of the Global North. And what we're seeing is similar to people who are fleeing the poorer districts of New Orleans which after Hurricane Katrina, people were fleeing the poorer districts where they had access to no power, electricity, water, food, or other services. And when they tried to move into the wealthier areas of town, they were literally turned back by armed police. People on cruise ships are joining people who've been affected by fire floods and droughts and other catastrophes who have basically been left to die by capitalism. Who is considered sacrificial and who is not in today's society. And as we deal with more and more unprecedented disasters, which we know are going to be happening because of climate change. I mean, right now we're seeing the super rich being bailed out by countries while many people are struggling to pay their rent. The way people are being treated on cruise ships is inhumane and medically negligent. It is another example of how capitalism responds to crises. We need system change to ensure that no worker is sacrificial. To help us do this, consider becoming a Green Left supporter. And that's it for this episode of Lockdown.